So your DaVinci Resolve Master Project settings are locked into the wrong timeline frame rate. Here's three quick and easy ways to fix it. In DaVinci Resolve, as soon as you create an empty timeline or bring any footage in, it feels like your timeline frame rate is locked. If you look here in Master Project Settings, I cannot pull this down anymore. It feels like everything I'm going to make is going to be at 24p. But you can actually make different timeline frame rates within here. Well, let's hit Cancel, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to go to File, New Timeline, and let's make one that's 30p instead. So I'll type in 30p. And I know you're like, I can't, this is not going to work. Here's the thing. You want to make sure you uncheck Use Project Settings. By unchecking Use Project Settings, it frees up this Format tab right here, which lets you change your timeline frame rate within a 24p project. So let's choose 2997. We'll hit Create. And now we have an empty 30p timeline. And all we're going to be doing is copying and pasting from one timeline to the other. So here's our 24p timeline. I'm going to select everything with Command A. And then we'll Command C, or you can go to Edit, Copy. It's right up under here. And then to jump to our other timeline, here's a little shortcut. Instead of double clicking it, we can use this drop down and choose 30p. Make sure our timeline down here is selected. And we're going to use Command V to paste it. And now everything that we had edited in our 24p timelines in our 30p timeline, we can verify that here under this column. We can see it in the inspectors, 30 frames per second. And we can also go to our deliver page and kick this sucker out right at 30 frames per second. This is really the best method to change your frame rate if you need to stay inside the same project and you won't be making a lot of new timelines after this point. And another way to create a new timeline frame rate is to select your timeline, right click and say create new timeline using selected clips. We'll do that and we'll make this one 60p. It was natively at 24 and we're going to uncheck the use project settings. This is the key to it all. And then we go under Format, we can choose Timeline Frame Rate, let's choose 5994, we'll hit Create. And what this has done, it's created a nest. It's a pre-comp, it's a compound clip, whatever you want to call it, um, but it's all within the 60p wrapper. So we've got 60 here, 60 here, and we can deliver at 60 frames per second. The other thing that's interesting to know, uh, if you're new to these nests, is you can always go back to what they were before uh, by selecting it, right-clicking, and go to Decompose in Place. And now you have all of that editing capability right there inside your 60p timeline. And this method is really great if you need to output multiple deliverables of the same video, like a TV spot that's cut at 24p and then output at 30 or 60 for broadcast, all while being able to re-edit the original native 24p timeline and see those changes reflected in the deliverable sequence. Real quick, one thing I want to point out, if you're in a 24p timeline, a 23976 timeline, you do have the option under the deliver page here under frame rate to add the pull down right here. So this is going to create 3-2 pull down. It'll make it 30 frames per second if that's something you need for a special display or for broadcast. Now what if we're earlier on in our project and we realize we made a mistake, we all do it, our timeline frame rate's locked in, we can't change this, except we can change our individual timelines, but we can't change our new defaults. What we're going to do is use dynamic project switching to copy and paste our work into. So let's go to our project manager. We're going to create a new project and we'll call this one, you know, something like 30p project, something real creative like that. We'll hit create and we'll go to our settings here and choose timeline frame rate with nothing in it. That's why we can do this. We'll choose 2997, we'll hit save, and we'll create a new timeline over here with Command N, and we'll call this one, I don't know, uh, how does 30p timeline sound? And we can leave our use project settings turned on in this case because we have this set up and locked in at the 2997, okay? Let's hit save, and we're gonna hit Shift 1. That gets us back to our project manager, and here's where dynamic project switching gets turned on. We're gonna right click and check it right there so we have the checkbox turned on and what this has just done is it's allowed us to have multiple projects open at the same time this is great because if I double click the 24 FPS project here we can now copy and paste from one project into the other so if I'm down here on the timeline I can select all with command A command C to copy and then up here at the top this is where we can switch projects the one below it changes your timelines so this is our dynamic project switching so we're going to choose Right there for our 30p project, we can choose our timeline, hit Command V, Mr. Command Victor, and Shift Z to see everything. And now we can see we have a 30p timeline. We can confirm that over here. We can deliver it at 30p inside of a 30p based uh, project. So anytime I make a new project from now on, it's going to be set to 2997. And I don't have to go in when I'm creating a new timeline and say use project settings and change those defaults. And this is probably the best way to go if you're towards the beginning of a project, you've got more footage coming in, making more timelines. It's kind of like getting a fresh start. 
But whenever possible, you want to make sure you set your project and your timeline frame rates to match the majority of your footage, or if you know what your final deliverable needs to be, set it to that frame rate. Hey, I'm Chadwick, and if you made it this far, I just want to welcome you. This is Creative Video Tips. It's all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. And if you like this one, you should check out my DaVinci Resolve playlist right here and maybe subscribe. You know, it's free. And since there's so much more to learn, I'll see you over that next video.